Hello, welcome in for your reading. I'm Adriana, let's get started. We have six cards drawn today. I will show them to you one at a time. We're gonna start with the strengths and the weaknesses that are really gonna help you and hold you back at this point, but things you need to be aware of. Two reversals, we've got six of earth and we've got the elder or the king of air. So your strength being the reversed six of earth, this is an awareness of power dynamics that you are able to shift. This is an indication that you know how not to get stuck in power dynamics. You know how to keep things even and balanced. And this aspect of yourself can really help you right now because when we have the Elder of Wands, I mean, sorry, Elder of Air as the weakness, this says to me mind games, that there is a tendency to want to play mind games even with yourself. Not so much with others, but this would be within yourself that you're playing mind games. So the way these two relate is that your knowledge of how to keep things equal on the outside is going to help resolve the mind games that you play with yourself on the inside. Okay, so when you get into some kind of interaction with someone, you are on this path right now where you are wanting equality, you're wanting mutual, this card keeps falling off. <laughs> I guess your weakness wants to go away. <laughs> um, you're wanting mutual relations, you're wanting equal give and take. And I feel like your inside strength is a knowledge of what that really means, what equal give and take looks like. And you are entering spaces wanting this mutual benefit. The only thing that holds you back is your mind starting to doubt, well, did I give too much? Did they give too little? Is this really, is this really true what they're asking or what they're promising? It's when you kind of slide backwards into second guessing yourself that you get held back from this more even way of dealing with the outside world. I wanna look at your current state at the moment. We've got Elder of Water, which is interesting coming off the back of the Six of Earth because Elder of Water is all about diplomacy, all about listening to other people, hearing their point of view and diffusing conflict. So if you're coming with this feeling of, okay, how do we make this so everyone wins? You're really set up in a good place right now okay so keep keep this in mind this isn't about going into your self-doubt or going inward into those places of self-illusion this is about continuing to channel your energy outwards to help people come to a place of peace reconciliation and and listening so that everyone gets what they want, what they need. Now, further confirmation, justice card as the root or the cause of all of this, that feeling of equal give and take balance couldn't be more aptly illustrated than by the justice card. Okay, so the justice card says, it, it kind of broadens this message to include karma that you have this in an awareness of karmic action, that anything you do at this moment, you're being very careful of so that you don't create karma in the future. This means keeping your intention high, keeping your mind clear, trying to, really working hard to stay on the right side of every action. And let's back up from what that means because staying on the right side of every action, what does that really mean? It means that your intention is pure. You're looking to benefit those around you. You're also looking to interact with the world from a place of presence and abundance rather than lack. Where we get into a problem with karmic actions is where we think we don't have enough or we feel empty or we feel lacking and then we get into this cycle of using using others and then that brings us to being used by others so we start this whole 
journey. I was rewatching um, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and this, it's the pre-story to Harry Potter. And the villain is such a, it's a perfect, um, I, I don't know the technical terms, but it's like narcissist, psychopath on overload. The guy has no conscience. He does, he uses people until they're not useful to him and then he casts them aside. And so it's, it's never about building networks or building connections. It's using something as long as it's useful and then casting it aside. So he's coming from a place of lack. I don't have enough power in myself to do the things that I want to do. Therefore, I need these external things. And so karmic action is asking us to not go into things that way, not going into things saying, I lack this or I lack that. Then you're going to say, well, Adriana, why even go to the grocery store? Because obviously if we're out of something, I should, I should go get it, right? But you're going to the grocery store not because you need it or not because you're going to fall apart because you don't have it. At least I hope that's not the case. It's that you want to lead an abundant, healthy life and going to the grocery store supports that. All right. And when you go to the grocery store that way, that's different. Because if you go to the grocery store the other way, you see everything taking advantage of you. Oh, they're trying to screw me over. This is trying to do this or this is. And it, it totally changes your perception. All right. So any blockage that you feel right now is nine of earth, something that's sitting too long, maybe a way that you're indulging yourself too much. Um, again, indulging in mind games, indulging in behavior that isn't right for you. That's the only thing that can hold you back at this point. And I want to go straight to the spiritual lesson, the spiritual lesson that you are engaged in right now, and that's Ace of Fire. Putting yourself out there, being real with who you are, being brave about who you are, and putting yourself out in a very honest way. The Ace of, of Fire is like you've come from this place of deep, introspection, a lot of time spent learning, a lot of time spent, I want to say, in the darkness, learning about yourself, learning how to be. And you're finally at a place where you're ready to start showing who you are. You're starting ready to start showing who your light is and who, how your light can expand. And the Ace of Fire is on a journey. She's not in the city yet. She's not surrounded by light quite yet. And so you might feel like you're the only one carrying the torch. You're the only one holding the light and you're still alone on your path. But the point is that she's walking towards something. Now that she's got her light, she wants to share it with the rest of the world so that everyone can have more light. And that's a lot different than sitting alone in the darkness, just trying to keep yourself warm. All right, we're gonna close with an oracle. If you're looking for a more personal reading or you want even more information about the direction of your spiritual path, please check out the links below in the description to website and other such things. But let me tap right now into the energy of these cards. Okay, two cards for you. Open your heart and infinite blessings. Well, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Open your heart to the infinite blessings. So there are blessings all around you. There are aspects of your life that add to you having a much more enriched, enlivened, uh, vitalized kind of life. And the question is, are you focusing on that or not? And if you are focusing on it, this is a call to really open your heart to it, to understand that this is the way that your soul loves you, the, the universe loves you. It doesn't matter who's doing the loving, but it's literally opening yourself up to receiving all of these blessings that the universe has for you. This Notice this isn't about retreating. This isn't about holding yourself back. This is about opening yourself up as you move forward. So as you move forward, opening yourself up to love, opening yourself up to more blessings. I love this word infinite. 
because infinite means not finite. So it means that there are more blessings than we can actually count or quantify. The question is, are we perceiving them that way? Are we thinking of them in a way that we can't even count them? And that's funny, right? Count your blessings is what we're told when we're being naughty, right? Like count your blessings. But what if the blessings are uncountable? And it's only when you're aligned with source, when you're in your right place, that you see that there are too many blessings for you to count. It's our job to get us there, or get ourselves there, get ourselves into this space where there are too many blessings for us to count. All right, I'll see you soon.